guys, Billy Sticker here. And uh, I posted a video the other day, uh, I think I was on my way to the doctor or something, and, and made a comment that I was just uh, recently diagnosed with a Chiari 1 malformation. And uh, seen three different, neurosur three different neurosurgeons uh, and a neurologist, and uh, they all recommended that I have the, the decompression procedure. And so what I wanted to do is just uh, do a quick little video going over just the basics of information that I found uh, about a Chiari malformation. If you're watching this, you're probably just trying to do research. Either you've been diagnosed with one or maybe a family member or something. But uh, Chiari 1 malformation, there's different types of uh, Chiari malformations. There's a type 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's not the severity of a malformation. Those are each different types. So the Chiari 1 malformation is what we're going to be talking about. But here you have uh, your skull, your brain. This is your cerebellum back here. In a Chiari woman, uh, this the hole at the base of the skull, it, it's called the foramen magnum. This should be just where your spinal cord comes out. Well, in a Chiari one, your the tonsils are on your cerebellum are actually wedged down, and they're coming out of that hole also, putting pressure on your spinal cord. Well, this does a few things. One, all that pressure on your spinal cord is not, uh, just isn't healthy. But you can start having issues. Uh, some of my symptoms were pretty severe numbness and tingling to my, uh, my hands and my arms, uh, really bad headaches. Uh, doing one of the exams, they noticed some reflexes in my uh, left leg were delayed. Um, but headaches is one of the big ones. And a headache from a Chiari 1 typically is going to start at the back of the head. And uh, it may radiate out, but a lot of times they're going to start, you're going to have bad headaches back here compared to, you know, a, a cluster headache or, you know, a migraine where it may just be on one side or the other or a sinus headache where it's in the front. But uh, what they do is, uh, it's called, a, well, I said it just a minute ago, uh, basically a Chiari decompression. They do uh, a craniectomy where this hole, and I'm drawing this a little bit bigger, but the hole right here, right here, they'll actually go in and they open up that hole to take the pressure off uh, off the brain right there. Well, when they open this up, you still have what's known as the dura, which uh, separates, the, you have your skull, the dura, and then your brain. They'll make an incision in the dura because even though the skull, they've removed some of the skull to take the pressure off, the dura is still putting applying pressure to that. So they'll open this up. Uh, I'm actually using Dr. Don Kim out of Houston and he's one of the, the top surgeons in the country for this. He actually handled uh, Congresswoman Gabrielle Gifford's uh, case whenever she went to Houston. So, uh, like I said, I went to several of them to see what I needed to do, and they all said the same thing, but I figured if I'm gonna have the procedure done, I wanna go to the best, so. But he told me whenever he makes this incision in the dura, he almost always sees the brain sigh. It's like, you know, it's finally saying, ah, oh, that pressure is gone. So once this dura is opened up, they have to go and put a patch on it. Uh, some places use um, like the membrane of a, a bovine or a cow's heart to patch it. Uh, Dr. Kim said he started using this synthetic uh, material that they'll use to patch it. And really one of the only risks, well, there's a few different risks that's associated with any surgery, but this one in particular, one of the main issues they see is sometimes this patch will leak spinal fluid. Uh, he said that only happens in about 5% of the cases, but since they started using this special synthetic, I don't even know what it's called, but he said that's virtually eliminated um, that complication. But once they patch that, then they just sew you back up. And the incision they make is, uh, is a vertical incision. And it'll be just right here in this area. Well, I don't have any hair. And I was hoping that they could make the incision, you know, horizontal right here, where maybe the scar wouldn't be as uh, as noticeable. But what happens when they make that incision? You have the muscles um, that are, you know, it's right here under your skin. They make that incision. There's a membrane that they uh, they slice that membrane, and then they pull the muscles to separate the muscles to expose the skull. And he said that typically for the first few days or, or a week or so after, your main soreness 
is going to be the manipulation of the muscles in your neck from doing that. But um, anyway, that's it. They patch it. Uh, can't read one of my information. Today is actually a Saturday. I'm having my procedure done on Monday. Uh, so in just a few days. And I'll post another video. Uh, let you know how the recovery is going. Thanks.